Chapter 1 Self-discipline is not an automatic process. It takes conscious effort. Self-discipline is the ability to control one's feelings and actions. A 2009 study by neuroscientists Todd Hare and Colin Kammerer showed that self-discipline is a biological concept. They found a high level of activity in two brain areas when people make decisions. These areas are called the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. This research revealed that self-discipline is a thing of will and plays a huge role in creating the human prefrontal cortex. In other words, self-discipline is beyond individual capacity or willingness of mind. However, with all the research and studies to show that self-discipline is biological, Walter believes it can be developed as a skill. He agrees that discipline has a biological process. Similarly, like any other habit, the brain is programmed to accept a pattern as a norm the more a person practices it. This also explains Aristotle's belief that we are what we constantly do. Excellence, then, is not a one-day event, but a habit cultivated over time. Several benefits of developing self-discipline include increased self-confidence, deep and meaningful relationships, absence of risky behavior and actions. Self-discipline is not a gift. No one was born with it. Like every other habit, it's a skill that must be learned, and it takes time to develop. However, in the long run, it is worthwhile. Remember, discipline is about doing the things we have to do, even when we are not motivated to do them. With this summary, you will understand how to build habits that will transform your life. In addition, you will also learn how to implement self-discipline in daily tasks. Your level of focus will affect the extent of your self-discipline. Daniel Walter Chapter 2 Your beliefs and mindset could be hindrances to developing self-discipline. Discipline is a consistent struggle for individuals, possibly due to bad company or influence, negative patterns of living, or a personal belief system. Remember, be patient with yourself on your journey to self-discipline. It takes time and hard work. Aside from personal reasons, there are also some psychological hindrances to discipline. Some of them include Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law justifies procrastination, arguing that work expands to fill the time allotted. Assigning a time to a task makes the mind want to do that task in that period. This could make a small job take more time than it should. Procrastination happens due to different reasons. Sometimes the illusion of perfection, the long planning phase, and waiting for the right time to make a particular decision could lead you to postpone the action. They might seem like good reasons, but there are always excuses within. Discipline's core is doing things whether we feel like it or not. Procrastination and discipline can be a consistent clash, but adhering to one means you can't achieve the other. A technique to stop procrastinating and stop the desire for perfection is the 70% rule. This rule states that you should get to work when you are 70% certain that you will succeed in a particular task. This eliminates procrastination and makes you take responsibility without waiting till you are 100% sure. False Hope Syndrome Most people believe that changing behavior patterns and developing good habits can happen quickly. But it's a fact that overnight success does not exist. You might get momentarily motivated to change your lifestyle and make plans towards achieving this. However, once the stress of life sets in and your day gets unbearable, most people forget these goals and revert to previous habits, setting them up for failure before they even begin. To avoid doing this, ensure you set your mind toward changing before starting the journey. This helps you expect as many challenges as possible without looking for the easy way out. Time matters, and it is of so much importance in developing discipline. As you evaluate the things hindering your discipline, Make sure you hold on to positive beliefs and mindsets that will help you achieve your goals. Chapter 3. Hard Work Enhances Personal Development Hard work is something most individuals do not enjoy. However, in being disciplined about goals, it is mandatory to work hard. But enjoying the process makes it a little better than expected. The ways to achieve this include Power of Association Linking hard work with positive feelings in your mind Pairing an unpleasant or difficult task with something you like will cause you to enjoy the work over time. This is because a positive association of action and feeling has formed in your mind. Consider eating your favorite snack before starting work or showering with a shower gel you love. 
It makes your mind associate work with your favorite food, or even the smell of the shower gel, and you begin to look forward to working. Another thing to try is playing soft music in the background, ensuring it is not music with lyrics. You can also decide to create incentives every time you complete a task. It is important to know that it takes time because consistency is key. Keep in mind, don't give up on the hard work required to achieve your goals. Instead, train yourself to find pleasure in the process. Identity association. It means linking goal attainment to your identity as a person. Ensure you understand how each goal you must achieve will change you and what these goals mean for your identity. For example, you are overweight and want to lose weight. If your goal is to run a full marathon, don't see yourself as someone working towards losing weight alone. View yourself as health conscious, full of energy, and for whom exercise is a part of life. This makes it an identity thing for you. You will notice that you are changing. Your thought process is also changing, which makes this process enjoyable. As you transition from setting goals to achieving them, it is important that you learn to fall in love with the process no matter how hard it is. Did you know? In a 2014 Pew Research Center survey of 44 countries, 73% of Americans view hard work as critical to making life progress. Chapter 4. Work-life balance ensures burnout does not happen. Discipline allows you to rest and still achieve your goals. Some people see discipline as consistently pushing towards a goal, which can be correct in some cases. But it can also lead to burnout and mentally and physically destroy a person. Remember, experiencing fatigue doesn't mean that you can't cope with your job or you're a failure. It's just that you need rest. Burnout is a mental and physical state that causes tiredness, indecisiveness, and hopelessness. It can happen to anybody and should be avoided. However, as you're improving in self-discipline, you must take the necessary precautions not to stretch yourself too far. Some of these safety measures include Take time out to rest. Everyone will think this is an obvious thing to do or even to know but the rate of burnout shows it is not. Relaxation is about giving yourself a break from the stress and pressure of the outside world. While resting, let go of all thoughts of work and ensure your phone or laptop is not near. Prioritize scheduling. Before starting a project or a task, try to know and understand how long this will take. You can schedule more than the required time to allow sufficient time for rest. Allocating time to each project and task makes it easier to be organized and more productive. If you're already at the burnout stage, resting is what you really need. The only way to recover from burnout is to take some time off to give your body and mind a break. During the recovery process, spend time reflecting on what you can learn from the experience. You must take personal responsibility. You cannot change the circumstances, the season, or the wind, but you can change yourself. Jim Rohn Chapter 5 Creating a positive mindset makes self-discipline effective. Making up your mind to be a winner matters a lot in your journey to developing self-discipline. Self-discipline can be an arduous process, so deciding to win at all costs should be your mindset. In striving for self-discipline, remember to take consistent action and believe in yourself. The way to create this mindset involves knowing what you want. Nobody gets into a car without knowing their destination. Know exactly what you desire from a goal. Understand why you're making a decision, what it entails, what you need to make it achievable, and how to get about doing it. Not cutting corners. Success doesn't only involve trial and error. It requires putting your best foot forward and doing things properly. And achieving self-discipline going through shortcuts doesn't help. It makes you go in cycles without any results at all. Don't make big leaps. Small strides toward significant ones are more effective. In self-control, Taking huge steps can get exhausting, but consistently making small efforts helps. The way to avoid this exhaustion is by creating a plan and sticking to it. This plan helps even when motivation and high energy cannot carry you through. Self-control is more effective when people know that each goal achieved is worth celebrating. So, celebrate each milestone. You can have your favorite drink or snack, rest, or even read a book that you've been looking forward to. However, also make it known to yourself that you just passed a milestone. Self-discipline and a positive mindset go hand in hand. In developing a good belief system, remember that it takes one step at a time. A quick reminder, there's nothing easy about success. If you don't put the work in, you will fail no matter how much knowledge you've acquired. Daniel Walter Chapter 6 
Developing the proper habits helps people achieve their goals. Most times, habits result from the things we do unconsciously over time. For instance, most people mindlessly brush their teeth in the morning. They grew up being trained by their parents. In adulthood, the habit of brushing their teeth is already wired in their brains. Remember, habits are hard to develop, but once we can master them, they make our daily lives easier. In self-control, some habits have to be formed. These habits break the process of self-discipline into smaller bits of daily routines. Some examples of these routines include Morning routine Most individuals do not consider what their mornings look like. For some, it's a system of snoozing alarms, waking up late, rushing to work, and feeling tired before the day begins. A self-disciplined person knows that this period is for activities that would make your day more productive, like exercising, eating a healthy breakfast, or even meditating. These activities make your day begin on a good note and most likely remain this way throughout the day. The final hour of the day. The way you spend the last hour is as important as the beginning of the day. A good night's sleep is an effective way to unwind and prepare for another day. Reading a book is also a great way to unwind after a long day. It will relax your mind and help you fall asleep easily. Before going to bed, turn off all your digital equipment. Practice gratitude. A self-controlled person takes gratitude seriously. They understand that saying thank you to people goes a long way every time. Individuals who practice self-discipline also avoid complaining. They look for the best way to solve a problem instead of grumbling about it. This makes their day more productive, and the people around them feel better. Set daily goals. Most individuals with self-discipline always have huge goals. But dividing them into smaller daily activities makes them easily achievable. If you practice small daily goals, you will consistently be able to achieve big ones. Conclusion Self-discipline is a lifestyle, not something you use when you want to achieve a goal or get better at work. It is like a muscle. You have to use it consistently to get better. Take time out to assess your daily habits, decisions, and how you achieve your life projects. This gives a pointer to if you are disciplined or not. If you discover that you are not, that is okay for a start. But staying there after this summary is not advisable. The great thing about self-discipline is that it affects the entirety of your life. Many of today's successful people, like Michael Jordan and Whitney Houston, are famous because they inculcate self-discipline into their daily routine. This shows how significant it is. It is also worth noting that although self-discipline has a lot of benefits, it also has its disadvantages like extreme self-discipline can lead to burnout and self-discipline rarely gives room for flexibility. Self-discipline is the key to success and it also impacts everyone around you. But to avoid being on the extreme regarding self-discipline, try to be balanced as self-discipline and balance work hand in hand. Ensure you take action by setting an achievable goal. You can start by adopting one habit for five minutes each day or waking up half an hour earlier. These little things will make your life more productive. Try this. Design your work schedule in such a way that includes leisure. For example, you can decide to do any activity you enjoy during that period. You could take a walk or even have a conversation with a colleague at work.